The stories of the ancient Greeks are somewhat unusual in the context that even though it's written history, we see it as myth. This means that we don't believe or understand this historical period, we pick and choose what we believe and class the rest as myth. The fact is, however, that the physicality of buildings that are mentioned in the stories, along with mythical creatures or godlike events, actually still do exist in some form or another. The Great Labyrinth is an example of this. You may be surprised to learn that the very word labyrinth comes from the Greek labyrinthos and describes any maze-like structure with a single path through it, which classifies it separately from an actual maze, which may have multiple paths intricately linked. The most famous labyrinth is found in Greek mythology in the story of Theseus, the Prince of Athens. This labyrinth was designed by Daedalus for King Minos on Crete to contain the ferocious half-man, half-bull known as the Minotaur. Daedalus was a brilliant man and features heavily in Greek history. He was the dreamer of his day who could envision seemingly unimaginable projects, but he was also a father. By the Roman period, Daedalus had acquired a long string of accomplishments and he came to represent, in general, the supreme master craftsman. His accomplishments appear in the works of such noted writers including Homer, Herodotus, Ovid, and Virgil. Wait till you hear this. Daedalus fell out of favor with King Minos, and he and his son Icarus were forced to flee for their lives. For this purpose, Daedalus constructed wings so that the pair might fly with ease from the wrathful king. But he warned his son that for the wings to function best, he shouldn't fly too close to the sea because the moisture would render the feathers too heavy and useless. Nor should he fly too high, or the sun's heat would likewise damage the wings. The young Icarus did not heed his father's advice, and overreaching himself and flying too close to the sun, the heat melted the wax which attached the wings to his arms. As a consequence, he plummeted into the sea and drowned in a tail that reminded of the folly of overambition. The tragedy was commemorated in the naming of the stretch of waters in that area, the Acharan Sea. And then, when Hercules dragged the wash body to an island, he renamed that place Acara in honor of the fallen youth. The island still bears the name today. Now, would it surprise you to learn that NASA has a project called Icarus? You have to wonder why they would name something after an apparently mythological story, right? But NASA are actively messing around with a theoretical engineering design study aimed at designing a credible, mainly nuclear fission-powered, unmanned interstellar space probe. The project is planned to take about 10 years and began formally on September 30th, 2009, when an international team of scientists and engineers were assembled like Avengers on a mission to protect the planet. In the Greek story, he flew too close to the sun and the wax melted on his wings. You have to wonder if it was in fact the re-entry of a spacecraft into Earth's atmosphere. Did his father Daedalus actually invent a flying machine capable of space travel? The ancient Greeks closely associated Daedalus with the god of Festus, who was the brilliant blacksmith of the Olympian gods, for whom he fashioned magnificent houses, armor, and ingenious devices. It is possible that both figures have their origin in the Phoenician and Ugaric god Kothar, who was also considered a skilled artisan. In addition, it seems likely that highly valued artworks traded by the Phoenicians in reaching Greece, especially Crete, gave rise to myths concerning fabled craftsmen of the Near East. Moreover, the very word Daedalos signified finely worked and elaborate. It's a crazy scenario for us in the today and now to think that these people knew how to build and invent things that wouldn't be considered again for thousands of years. The very fact that they envisioned it in the first place means that these things were not born in the imagination of the mind, but must have been actual physical things before these people were credited for their undertakings and eventual achievements. We'll leave it at that for the moment, guys. Let us know in the comment section what you're thinking, and as always, thanks for watching. Scientists from China have genetically modified human embryos. The results confirm widespread rumors that such experiments are possible, leading to the question, are humans an experiment being conducted by aliens? Most of you may think this is crazy talk and completely impossible, but wait till you hear this.
On October 8, 1922, the American Weekly section of the New York Sunday American ran a prominent feature titled Mystery of the Petrified Shoe Soul. While he was searching for fossils in Nevada, John Reed, a distinguished engineer and geologist, suddenly stopped and looked down in complete disbelief at a rock near his foot. There lay part of what seemed to be a human footprint in the rock. Closer inspection showed that it was not a mark of a naked foot, but was a shoe sole which had turned to stone over millions of years. He had just discovered a fossil which is the biggest mystery of science today. The rock in which it was found is at least 200 million years old. The print was inspected by geologists who confirmed the print is authentic and the rock is amazingly from the Triassic period 250 million years ago. The threads of the print have been examined under a microscope and the twisted threads are visible in the design of the shoe. According to what we were taught, that has no business being there. It proves that there were beings on Earth hundreds of millions of years ago, before modern man. That doesn't make sense, right? Have you considered the ancient astronaut theory? The idea surrounding ancient aliens is that humans were influenced by a group of extraterrestrials that visited Earth in the past and were directly involved with human evolution. Many believe this was accomplished by way of genetic engineering, ultimately helping the development of human cultures and technologies. It would explain the sudden advancement of the human brain and the missing link in humankind's struggle for survival, to which there is no other logical explanation. Well, there is evolution, but the more we learn, the more unlikely it seems. The evolution theory was developed over 140 years ago by Charles Darwin, before science had evidence available to prove the theory false. His famous book, On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection, has a title that is now known to be scientifically false. New species cannot evolve by natural selection. Modern scientific discoveries are proving evolution to be impossible. So why are humans so unique? Why has no other animal on the planet evolved to building rockets or inventing technologies? It really makes you wonder. There's no logical explanation why humans stand out compared to other species. It doesn't make any sense. According to evolution, we'd have to shed our fur only to immediately start killing animals and wearing their fur as a replacement. It doesn't make any sense. There simply must have been intervention at some point in their history to make our brains have a quantum leap in understanding. Within the past hundred years alone, the IQ of the human brain has gained 30 points. Why now? What is causing this? DNA proves that we all come from one Eve in Africa about 100,000 or so years ago. But our DNA includes something odd, only found in humans. About 1.5% of our DNA is different from that of a chimpanzee. This might not sound like much since our DNA is made up of 3 billion base pairs. That means that there are 45 million differences between our DNA and that of a chimps. What's odder, the once called junk DNA has been discovered to be identical to the strands found in all other world mammals. The name has been changed to mystery DNA segments. This evidence more than implies that the code is so vital to both humans and mammals that it didn't change after millions of years of evolution. But then, somehow, 50,000 years ago, our DNA changed almost overnight and we developed super intelligence. Described now as a special event, it wasn't a natural progression of the brain, there had to be a jump start. If extraterrestrials who visited Earth in the past left any trace of their existence and activities on this planet, where would be the place to do it? Suppose they left a coded message in our DNA. This would mean that they wanted us to find it, but only when we acquired technology enabling us to read and understand it. Is it possible that our DNA reflects a computer code, an alien nanotech, and ultimately a cosmic fingerprint left by ancient aliens? Perhaps the answer lies within the very essence of what makes us human, and with this knowledge, we might yet discover our rightful place in the universe. Thanks for watching, and remember, the ways at which we arrive at knowledge are hardly less wonderful than the discovery of these things themselves.